So those that know me know that I am a massive fan of the Crisis series. Absolutely love them. They're fantastic. Definitely check them out if you haven't. And one of the things that you can do in Crisis is that when you tap Q, when you activate the armor mode of the suit, uh, this, this very cool hex effect sort of overlays over the screen, encroaches in from the edges. It looks a bit like this, uh, if you saw that picture on the screen. And uh, yeah, just, just to denote, you know, what's going on in the game. And I thought that was a pretty cool effect. So I've gone and recreated it in Unreal Engine, and I'm going to show you how to do that today. The only thing you're going to need is this hex normal, which I've included in my texture pack. You can download that in the description below. And that's literally it. That's all we're going to need. So just right click in your content browser here, make a new material. We're just going to call it Armor PP for post process because it's a post processing effect. So open that up, uh, clip him over here, and we'll get our texture in. A quick way to do this is to just select your texture in the content browser and then hold in T and click in your material and it will drop in your selected texture. Very simple, very cool. All right, first things first, let's get some UV controls for our uh, texture here. We'll need uh, texture coordinates. We'll also need a multiply and an append. So we're multiplying our texture coordinates and we're going to append these two values. So we're not, instead of multiplying just by one singular scalar value, just for straight, you know, scale, uh, we can append two scalar parameters, UVX and UVY, so that we have control over the, the horizontal and the vertical multiplier of our texture. So we'll plug these into our append, set them both to something like five, because it's a pretty, pretty big texture, pretty close. We'll plug these into our UVs and we're about done with that. Now, the, the basic logic here is that we're going to be lurping between the regular scene, the regular post process, and a modified post process, which will have our hex overlay. So uh, let's get our scene texture, scene texture node, and we make sure that's set it to post process input zero. Cool, and we'll also need a lurp. So we'll be lurping between our regular post process input so we'll duplicate this once. And our modified post process. So in the A value, at least the, the, the post process node here plugged into the A value, we will plug in our textures. Cool. And also as a thing that I forgot to do earlier, we'll have to set our material here to post process. Don't forget that step. Alrighty, with that done, uh, we can talk about how we, oh, actually let's, yeah, let's make some other controls because we won't be able to use just the, the full on texture. We'll have to use just a red channel uh, to, to manipulate our values here. So let's go to multiply and another scalar. We'll call this one the texture, texture multi, default to one. Plug that into our multiply and then our red channel from our texture into the multiply. We'll also need an add and another texture coordinate node. So we're multiplying the result of our uh, UVs here by a scalar. This will change the look of the texture in the scene. And then we're just adding it to our texture coordinates before plugging it in to our scene texture, which we've got here in the A. And now the way that we, uh, the, the alpha value here, the way that we're going to be lurping between these two different effects is with a radial, radial gradient exponential, which is really just a, just a function, which is going to produce a dot. If we go to the plane, see, so the radial gradient is just a, a circle dot. It comes built in with your, with the engine. You should be able to find it. If not, um, you can down here, view options in your content browser. You can show engine and plugin content here. So that will, uh, that will expose a lot of these things. So if you're not finding this type of thing that I've told you is built in, <laughs> just, uh, just enable the engine content. So now we have our radial gradient. That's sitting there nicely. We can plug this into the alpha. Uh, we're going to be using some, uh, some controls here. For one, uh, we need to kind of animate the, the effect as it comes in. So let's get another scale up. Let's call this the effect density. Default this to, let's say three. Plug this into density. And now for the, for the radius, for the actual size of the circle, we'll come back here to our editor, right click in your content browser and make ourselves another material parameter collection. Let's call this one armor params. So just open that up and we'll add ourselves a scalar. Uh, bring this down, default value of, I don't know, let's say one. And a parameter, the parameter name, we'll call it radius. So save that and we're done. That's our parameters set. All we need to do now is get them into the, get that parameter into the material. And I think you find it by, yeah, collection parameter. 
And that'll be our armor params. The parameter name is radius. A little arrow here to make it size it up. And plug that into radius. Now once we hook up this lerp into a missive, we're done with our material. So to, to recap, we've got some UV controls for our normal map here. Uh, we're multiplying the effect here so we can control sort of how much of it appears. Adding it to the texture coordinates and plugging it into the UVs of our post process. Then we lerp between our modified post process and the regular post process. And we're using a, uh, a radial gradient exponential to lerp between the two. So that'll give us the, you know, the black and white values, the zero and one, and controlling it with this radius value in a collection parameter. So hit save on our uh, material and we're about set. Back in the content browser, we'll right click this, we'll make an instance. Then in the world outliner, find your post process volume, search for material, add one to this array, pick asset reference, and then drag your instance onto this little gold, gold spot here. And something should have happened. You should see it in the, in the editor now. So let's open up our instance and we'll play with some values like uh, density. Density is one that we can play with. The texture multi might create some interesting artifacts. We'll just keep that defaulted to one. And the UV X and Y. We'll just adjust these to make sure that it's, you know, the, the correct size. And you might want to be locking the aspect ratio in your, in your game so that these aren't getting warped and shifted with the, you know, with different resolutions. In fact, we'll make the density a little, little less and we can control the radius from our from our parameters so we can make this really strong and then back in the instance change the density we're getting there finding uh, finding a good balance here okay so we got something like this so as you can see and if you remember that screenshot that I showed you earlier uh, we have the, the effects sort of encroaching in from the sides and by manipulating these values more like the radius here we can start at anything above one will be nothing. And then we'll creep it in down to about 0.5 or 0.4. And the way that we do this, so we'll just close those. And in fact, we can trash that post process there is we'll come to our world settings. We'll find our first person character. Cause I'm in first person, open him up. All right, we get here. So add component and we want to add a post process. Done. Make sure that it is unbound. Unbound, and we want to make sure that it's enabled. Yep, all defaults are good. Then come over here to materials. We'll add an asset reference and put our post process in there like that. So that's all done. But of course, now we got to go back to our material parameter collection uh, over here and set our value. To, well, we've got to set it to, to off screen. So we'll hit play and you see here, no, uh, no effect. And just to double check, set this down to yeah, 0.3, save, try again. Now we have our effect and you can see the warping in the UVs here. So this might take some dialing in to, uh, to make it look, you know, to make it look good. Anyway, we can get onto our, uh, onto our functionality. Okay. In keeping with the crisis theme, Let's get the Q key, just like in the just like in the game. We'll come off the pressed into a flip flop, which is just a node which every time it executes, it'll change from A to B. And then we'll use a timeline to animate our transition. So we'll call our timeline transition, spelling it correctly, hopefully. Open it up, and we'll add ourselves a float track. Call this one. Uh, we'll just call it float. And we want two keys. We want one key. The first will st oh, the length set to set for this to happen over 1.5 seconds. So the first key uh, at zero will be a value of one. And the second key at the time 1.5 will be a value of 0 0.4. These are the values that we just experimented with. So anything that's above one is going to be no effect. And then the closer to zero we get, the more saturated the effect is going to be. So compile that, head back to our event graph, and this flip-flop here is where the magic happens. So once we hit Q, we activate it, we'll play the, play the timeline. Then when we hit Q again, it's going to play the timeline in reverse, so that it goes from you know, activated to inactive, but it sort of animates its way in and out in a nice and smooth way. Then we'll need a set scalar parameter value node. Plug this into update, plug the float into float, 
our collection is our armor params and the parameter name is radius. File that, save, and we can jump in and test it out. All right, so there's a little bit going on. I think the default value of our params here, yeah, we'll have to set this back to one. Save, try again. And there we have it. And we can manipulate the density value to sort of smooth out the that circle that you're seeing in the center there so it's not so not so harsh when it comes in. Uh, we can do that in the instance. Uh, without sort of being able to see it directly, and for the sake of speed, we'll just we'll just eyeball it. Yeah, so you can see a softer transition uh, transition sort of period. In fact, we can go even further. We'll drop down our density to to somewhere around four. Hit play. Very cool. And in fact, we probably go higher with our timeline. See, now we're just in the stage where it's just just tweaking, just getting the effects that we like. So if we go even further down, like 0 0.25, and we'll hit save and play. Ooh, it comes way, way in. And we can kind of still vaguely see it on the outside. So the density is going to be interacting with the, uh, the size. We'll set our value to two, and we'll get this guy to 0 0.6. Save and play again. That's a bit better. We're transitioning in nicely. Very cool. So that's the, that's how to recreate the armor effect from the Crisis series. Hope you guys like this tutorial. Oh, and uh, one more thing. I hit a thousand subs. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm blown away. I'm, I'm absolutely shocked at, at, at sort of the, the rate about how many people like watching my videos. I have a 1000 sub sort of video in the works, but it's taking a bit longer to make than I thought it would. I expect that in the next week or two. And until the next video, I'll see you guys then.